Good morning, Nolby. Welcome to Ross's Game Dungeon. This is sort of an intermission for the series. I've been doing this show for a while now, and by far the biggest complaint I've received is that I'm not covering all the games. Well, that's not gonna change, but I think I can cover more. So from here onward, I'm gonna try cutting some corners. It just depends on the episode. This show has never really been about having rules anyway. And on top of that, I'm going to be getting help running this thing. As I say this, I'm as curious as you are how this is going to turn out. Is this the turning point where everything goes to hell? Maybe. Let's find out. So I'm going to kick off this new approach with a winner. The Legend of Kyrandia. This is a fantasy graphic adventure game. And it's what I'm picking for testing the waters here, so there's got to be something to it, right? Well, we begin and a narrator tells us that Malcolm the Jester has escaped from prison. He killed the previous king and was locked up for 18 years until his warding spell broke down. Now he's rampaging and trashing the entire island because he's full of rage. So this tells me two things right away. First, Kyrandia must be pretty progressive to imprison someone for regicide. I can't think of any other kingdom where they wouldn't just cut his head off. The end. Second, murdering a king is pretty hardcore for a jester. So this is a Joker League villain we have here. But I shall give fair warning. Don't jump on that tree. Oh! Tis funnier that way, is it not? After watching him blow up stuff, we see an old man writing his memoirs because he knows Malcolm is coming to kill him for imprisoning him. Yeah, see? There he is. Really, Malcolm is more like Super Joker because he stole a crystal and has serious magical powers. He doesn't even need to rig explosives, he just makes it happen. And he is bitter. So rather than kill his jailer, he turns him into stone but leaves his eyes. I shed no tears for Karandia, but cannot deny you yours. So this is a scary fantasy Joker from hell. So you know what that means. We're gonna play as Fantasy Batman. Yeah, the dark hero coming out of the shadows to save Kyrandia from this lunatic. Is he going to look like Batman too? Will he have magic powers? Hmm, if there's a merchant near here, I'll get new socks. Okay, this is not Batman. Damn it. Well, he dresses nicely, but that's all he has going for him. Okay, let's try and stay optimistic. So Brandon drops in and is surprised to see his grandfather turn to stone. He's troubled and not sure what to do about this. Should I lay grandfather on the bed? And because he doesn't have enough pressure on him already, the treehouse here starts to talk to him also. Brandon? Brandon! Who said that? Are, Are you Brandon? Brandon? So to sum it up, the tree man says, hey listen. I speak for the land, and we don't appreciate you guys blowing up everything. You're gonna get us all killed. So you need to go fix this. I mean, what the hell? I'm a talking tree. What do we do to you? What? Why me? Because it's your destiny, damn it! That's how things work around here! Your destiny was forged before your birth. This is a fantasy story, and you're the hero! Now get out of here! So off we go to save the land. Well, we wander through the forest a little bit, which is beautiful. Really, every screen in this game looks great. Then we go see our neighbor wizard to find out what's going on. Here we get more details on how it wasn't just your grandfather who imprisoned Malcolm. It was a whole council of mages. That means Malcolm probably has an entire hit list of every prominent mage in Kyrandia. So the plot is almost like being on the reverse end of a revenge movie where the protagonist is working his way up the chain of bad guys. And you have to figure, with Malcolm's disposition, he's going to take his time killing them one by one. I mean, Bryn here is a two minute walk from your grandfather and she has no security whatsoever. Malcolm's obviously saving her for later. 
He's been in prison for 18 years and he likes to joke a lot. You know he's concocting some twisted fate for each of them. He's gonna savor this. Well, that works out well for us because not only does that buy us time, but we're not even on the hit list. At least not directly. And as I established, we are not the Dark Knight coming to stop him. We're Brandon. Let's talk about Brandon a minute. Ow! 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 That snake bit me! Brandon is our hero. And you know how some people have natural inclinations towards different fields? Like one person is clearly meant to be an artist, another person is a born hunter. Well, Brandon feels like someone who is destined to take orders from somebody else. I see his calling in life as maybe a waiter or an assistant to a shoe cobbler, something like that. Ow, that's hot. Ow. I think I'm getting a rash. Brandon has an innocence and naivety about him to such a degree that it's likely to start causing problems in life for most people his age. It's not clear if he has a job. I'm not surprised that we find out later that he plays with kids on a regular basis. But see, that's the great thing about Brandon. He plays the fool so effectively that there's this charm to seeing just how long we can keep him alive. Because he's not just up against bad odds, he's in over his head by an order of magnitude. He's only semi-aware of the danger he's in at any given time. This ironically gives him a fighting chance against Malcolm, because he's going to let his guard down around Brandon. He recognizes him for what he is. From Malcolm's perspective, he's pretty much in the same category as that squirrel from the intro. Now there's a twist to Brandon, but I'll get to that in a bit. For now, let's look at more of Kyrandia itself. It's a pleasure to explore in this game. All the characters have personality, nope. you're practically tripping over fantasy architecture, and wherever you go, shiny gems. I think it's been established that as a species, we're attracted to colorful, shiny things, and Kyrandia sure taps into that. Ooh, purple sparkles. I don't even care about gems that much in reality, besides their obvious value, but this game somehow makes me want to grab as many as I can find. You never know when you might need a colored gem for some gem power. Yeah, see? Yeah. Don't leave home without your pockets stuffed full of gems. This rare gem has a tiny rainbow inside it. Oh yeah. Now I don't want to spoil too much, but the dialogue is all pretty good too. Each mage keeps passing you off to another one because they don't know what to do with you. At one point, you end up with one that's half senile and his dragon who bicker like a veteran married Hello? couple. May I help you? He asked for me. Why would he visit you? What do you want, boy? Are you taking orders for cheese? This is Brandon, you old dolt. You know, Kellogg's grandson, the one on a quest to overthrow Malcolm's power. I knew that. So, Branson, you're a dancer. That seems odd. Karandia really hits this balance between having jokes, but at the same time feeling believable enough to be real for this world. The Mystic Book Club. So after wandering around a while, we finally encounter Malcolm. He throws knives at Brandon for sport. He doesn't actually kill him, or rather, he doesn't necessarily <laughs> kill him. Again, why should he ruin his fun so early? But if Brandon manages to get his act together enough to not die, then we enter the caves, which is a maze of dwindling light. You're going to get torn to shreds repeatedly trying to map this out. But hey, we get to see an emerald chamber and uh, a transdimensional passage? I mean, it's daylight outside. That never changes. But here we are at nighttime, underground with a lake or ocean, Moon and stars in the distance. See, that's the great thing about fantasy games. You can just throw stuff like this in there and not worry about it. We don't need an explanation, and that's good because we don't get one. It's Cave World, that's the reason. Rawr. But the game isn't all make-believe because we also have what may be the most accurate betrayal of lava I've seen in a video game. This heat is pretty intense, but I know I can take it. I'm burning! Yep. And during this time, we also pick up more magic for our magic amulet. 
Now in practical terms, this is just another puzzle solving element, but this aspect kind of diverges from most graphic adventure games, because you can activate the magic anytime as a special ability. See, I can just float through the forest now because I want to. Doesn't really help me at all. And it's a comfort factor knowing that I can always just snort some fairy dust as a booster whenever I feel like it. Oh yeah, that's better. So after leaving the cave, I have to say I'm getting some Revenant vibes, even though that came later, because both games involve a fantasy island with a maze-like cave network in the middle, and exiting on the other side of the mountain range. I imagine this could be a tradition even older than Kyrandia, but I couldn't help but notice the pattern. The more fantasy islands, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm not always going to talk about this in the future, but the music in this game is pretty great. It goes back and forth between a traditional fantasy score to more contemporary music. I like pretty much every track in the game, except this one. On the other side of the island, we find new and exciting ways to die and meet up with Xanthia, another mage who's likely on the hit list as well. The game slowly starts going potion crazy after this. Xanthia is the fantasy equivalent of a survivalist when it comes to potions. She's running her own personal potion factory out of her cottage here. This could be illegal for all we know. That might be why she has a secret trapdoor escape route at the back. And I'm not going to reveal the entire game, but we'll end this with Brandon's big secret. It's here that we learn that Brandon is the prince. The prince of Kyrandia. Although that just raises a bunch of questions for me. Okay, first off, we also learned that Malcolm didn't just kill the king, he killed the king and the queen. Which means Brandon's parents were murdered, like Batman. But wait a minute, if Brandon is the prince and his parents are dead, doesn't that make him the king? Or rather, wouldn't that make him the king if he didn't have a living grandfather, Kallik? Was Kallik the king this entire time? If so, what the hell is he doing sitting in a treehouse running the Mystic Book Club? Doesn't he have other responsibilities, like ruling the land? So I'm confused here. Is Kallik the wrong bloodline? Like, say his daughter was the queen, who wasn't royalty by birth. She only married into it. Would that explain things? I thought kings and queens only married other royalty. But maybe it works differently in Kyrandia. I'm trying to figure this out because this game makes a big deal about the bloodlines. The pact requires royal blood. What should I do? Let's mix a potion. That's why Brandon is the chosen one. He has royal blood. He can go places even the mages can't. So for the sake of argument, because nothing else makes sense to me, let's say Kallik is not the king. Well then shouldn't he have been teaching Brandon to be the next king? I mean, Brandon is somebody who really needs some life training here. Delicious. I hope they aren't poisonous. But forget about Brandon a second. Who's been running the country for the past 18 years? Has it just been anarchy this whole time? I don't know what the population of Kyrandia is. I've only seen about 10 people and a bunch of talking plants and animals. I guess anarchy can work if that's the scale we're talking about. Or rather, it did work until somebody like Malcolm came along. Who's the reason we had anarchy in the first place? So that's the twist. Brandon here is the ruler of Kyrandia. Man. This makes him the poster child for nepotism. Brandon is a walking stereotype of someone who gets their job only because of who they're related to. He's unqualified, there are a lot of better people to take his place, but hey, he's got the royal blood. This seems like it would be a good jumping off point for a side story of a knight protecting Brandon from the hardships an actual king would have to deal with. I mean, let's face it, without a lot of help, Brandon would be overrun by warlords as soon as they discovered Kyrandia. Let's hope it's a big ocean. And speaking of warlords, just to skew people's perspective, some of you may recognize the voice of Brandon here. 
And this is where I'll end it. Some games I'll spoil completely because I wouldn't wish them on anyone else. Others are so good, I try to hold back a little bit. The graphics are great, the music is great, the writing is great, the voice acting is great, the gameplay... Well, it's a little bit above average for a 90s graphic adventure game. This isn't anywhere near as brutal as most others at the time, but you'll probably still need a walkthrough. I'd say if you've never played a graphic adventure game before but wanted to try one, this is the one I would pick. And that's the game! I think the moral to this story is it's hard to go wrong imitating the Joker as a villain. Stay tuned for the Christmas episode for less magic and more pain. Okay, less pain then, I guess. I'm busy! Go away! Your mumbling distracts me! Please leave and go! Excuse me. <coughs> Forest! <coughs>